If you could dive right into the mysterious darkness of the ocean depths, who knows what you'd come upon? Legends that are hundreds of years old mention some giant sea monsters hiding deep down below the ocean waves, like the Kraken, the Loch Ness Monster, the Hydra, Leviathan, and so many more. Okay, no one has ever seen such monsters, but there are still weird and unusually big sea spiders, squid, worms, and many other animals that grew way more than we'd expected. Take a look at the colossal squid from sub-Antarctic waters. It's around 14 times longer than the arrow squid that lives near New Zealand. And deep down in the Pacific Ocean, there's a sea sponge as big as a minivan. Oceans contain about 96.5% of all water on our planet. Up to 80% of all life on Earth we've discovered is under the oceanic waves. We haven't explored, mapped, or even seen more than 80% of the ocean. In fact, we've mapped Mars better than we have the ocean bottom. The pressure down there is insane, and it would make you feel like you're holding up almost 50 jumbo jets. And temperatures at such depths are extremely low. Conditions deep below the oceanic surface are harsh, so creatures that live there need to adjust. That's why many of them grew very, very big to survive. Creatures that live in cold, dark depths are so big because of a phenomenon called deep sea gigantism. The deeper you go below the oceanic surface, the less sunlight there is. That's why the temperatures drastically fall. The result of this is increased cell size and longer life of creatures. Also, these creatures don't have as much oxygen as the marine animals that live in shallower parts. And their food sources are minimal. Much of the food they get comes from shallower waters, and only a little bit trickles down to the deeper parts. And when there's not enough food, being large is an advantage. Larger creatures can move farther and faster to find something to eat. Their metabolism works slower. They don't digest the food that fast, so they can store food and conserve energy for hard times when they can't find anything to eat. They don't need to regulate their body temperature either, which also helps them save some energy, which they can then transfer to other body processes. They mature more slowly and later than those living in shallow waters. The majority of fish species that dwell in deep waters live 30 years or even more. Orange roughy fish, on the other hand, live up to 150 years. This fella grows 24 feet in length and weighs up to 1.5 tons. But it grows to be so big for centuries. They start looking for partners when they're 150 years old. And they can also live this long because there are not so many predators at such depths. Also. There are no humans or other things that can disturb them or endanger their existence. At such depths, the environment is pretty stable, so many animals there are like living fossils, because they probably haven't changed in millions of years. The first 650 feet of the ocean's depth are considered to be the open ocean. The majority of the marine life we've discovered lives there, since that's the area the sun can still reach. And then, as you continue going deeper, you reach the Twilight Zone. It seems like nothing lives there. But at about 820 feet, you see a small oasis of ancient life blooming. For example, there are sea lilies, animals that have been living at such depths unchanged for millions of years. Coelacanths, another living fossil, have been living in the ocean for more than 360 million years. Hagfish haven't changed in a very long time either, for over 300 million years. This creature lives at depths of 5,500 feet. They evolved before the rest of the vertebrates, which is why this is the only living animal without jaws or a spine, even though it still has a skull. Deep sea creatures can't survive in shallow waters. They've evolved to live in depths under bigger hydrostatic pressure. Humans and other organisms that have internal spaces filled with gas would end up crushed if we could go to such depths. That's why deep sea divers always need to wear special dive suits designed for surroundings with higher pressure, even though they're not going that deep to the areas where these giants live.
but near Antarctica, you can see gigantism way closer to the surface, like giant sponges, sea slugs, sea spiders the size of a dinner plate, worms, and even some enormous single-celled organisms. They all tend to chill in shallower waters. Scientists are not sure why exactly, but they think it could have something to do with oxygen. Giant species use just a little oxygen, and the waters around Antarctica are pretty rich in it, which means there's hardly any limit to these animals growing bigger and bigger. Back to deep sea creatures. As mentioned, they had to adjust to strong pressure, so they almost don't have any air gaps in their body at all. They're mostly water-based, and since water is incompressible, which means it's not something you can compress, it helps them stay unaffected at such high pressure. But because of all that, if they were to go up towards the surface, they'd probably swell up, maybe even explode. Just look at the blobfish, the one that takes the title of the ugliest animal in the world. It looks normal deep down below the surface, where its natural habitat is. But when it gets up to the surface, where the pressure is 120 times lower, it changes its shape. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or muscles, so without high deep sea pressure, it ends up being all floppy and saggy. The dark oceanic depths are not just scary to watch, but to listen to as well. In 1997, scientists were trying to find underwater volcanoes located off the South American coast. During their travels, they recorded one of the loudest noises ever registered. It was pretty weird, too. It was so loud, even sensors from more than 3,000 miles away managed to pick it up. They later called it the bloop. It took them 15 years to conclude the sound came from an ice quake. That's when seismic activity breaks frozen ground. Water at the bottom of the ocean is not always extremely cold. There are hydrothermal vents on the seafloor, and the water that comes out of them can be up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Powerful pressure, yep, the same one that would crush you, is something that doesn't allow the water to boil. There are hundreds of animal species that live near deep sea hydrothermal vents. Some of them, such as tube worms, are not like anything we have seen before. These worms absorb chemicals from vent fluids. That's how they feed bacteria that live in them. And in return, those bacteria give them the carbon the tube worms need to survive. Two-thirds of all of the coral species scientists discovered live in dark, deep, and extremely cold parts of the ocean. Some even live in parts that are three miles deep. They can survive at low temperatures, such as 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of these cold water corals are more than 8,000 years old. They form amazing structures that can rise up to 115 feet tall. The deep is not just a mysterious world of unusual creatures. The landscape under the oceanic surface is magnificent, too. The canyons hiding there make even the Grand Canyon seem small. For instance, check out the one located in the Bering Sea, the Zhem Chug Canyon. Its vertical relief is more than 8,500 feet deep. That's huge! The largest ocean waves are not the ones you can see from the shoreline. They occur under the surface, and they're called internal waves. They take place between two water masses that have different densities. They travel at speeds of thousands of miles per hour and can be 650 feet tall. Do you know how harsh the water around undersea volcanoes is? It is so acidic that some samples even showed it to be at a level between stomach acid and battery acid. This water also contains so many chemicals that are toxic to normal marine creatures and plants. And yet, some species have found a way to live near or inside hydrothermal vents, like this special type of shrimp. This mysterious creature from the dark depths of the ocean has adapted to grazing bacterial filaments using its small claws, which are similar to garden shears. Hydrothermal vents stemming from the volcano coat the rocky surface which means that all those creatures living down there get something to eat. In fact, undersea volcanoes provide three very important life-sustaining elements in those areas. Minerals, hot water, and bacteria. Whenever there's an open fissure in the ocean floor, water seeps into it. 
bacteria living in the crust of our planet then move in and remain in the hot water. The temperature of the water there can go up to 750 degrees. When the fissure erupts and expels the heated water, these bacteria get expelled along with it. There's something else that comes along for the ride. Many nutritious minerals that resided in the rock that has been dissolved by the super hot water. The warmth coming from the vent and the minerals sustain the bacteria and give them the perfect chance to multiply. In many cases, the first sign of life around an underwater volcano is a thick coating of bacteria. The bacteria develop stable colonies, which is why other deep sea creatures that inhabit these dark areas use them as food, like these shrimp. They are trying to eat that fast-growing bacteria and at the same time do their best to avoid the hazards of all the volcanic eruptions. The waters surrounding undersea volcanoes are usually too acidic and hot for humans to dive to, even when there is no lava, ash, or steam spewing from the craters. But when a group of researchers took adequate equipment and finally managed to leave their camera in the hot acidic waters for an hour, they had no idea that they were going to find... Are those... sharks? They were hiding in the deep, orange, murky waters around the Solomon Islands submerged Kavachi. Different shark species, including hammerheads, scalloped hammerheads, and reef sharks. The story gets even better when you realize Kavachi is an active volcano with pretty common eruptions. Apparently, submarine boiling lava and underwater explosions don't scare those sharks at all. It's their home where they feel safe and comfortable. They must have done a great job evolving into this harsh environment over millions and millions of years. So now they can swim through steam and lava without any issue. One of the reasons could be the special pores that they have near their snouts. One of these theories even says if these pores allow sharks to sense changes in the magnetic field of our planet. And sharks need that information for homing and migration. But that also means that they can detect cyclones and hurricanes thus able to skillfully avoid them and similar dangerous situations in time. Back then, scientists also discovered a sleeper shark about 12 miles from the volcano. It's a specific type of shark that usually lives in the northern Atlantic and Pacific, or in some cases even further south near Antarctica in Australia. All right, now let's check out this unusual worm. Don't let its rainbow glow fool you. This mysterious creature is actually a scary predator with jaws you usually see in horror movies. This creep leaves 3,900 feet deep, down on the muddy seafloor near northern New Zealand. A team of researchers took a three-week expedition throughout deep-sea areas in the volcano-rich Kermadec Ridge. This enormous area included 3,800 square miles of canyons, continental slopes, mountains, and hydrothermal vents, parts where undersea volcanoes release gases and hot water. And that's where they found this thing. There are 10,000 species of these worms in the oceans. Most of them have tails and segmented bodies, but they usually look pretty different from one another, depending on the area where they live. There is also a tube worm, which we also call the Pompeii worm. This type lives in hydrothermal vents deep down on the ocean floor. The temperature down there sometimes goes over 140 degrees. Up next, we got a snaggletooth dragonfish. A team of researchers found these tiny critters in underwater volcanoes near the coast of Sydney. It's a black fish with translucent fangs that looks way scarier than most fish you'd see close to the surface because it lives in warm, acidic water near undersea volcanoes. Humans rarely get to see these deep sea fish. All right, how about a lobster? The Europtychus squat lobster lives in depths of up to 4,600 feet, mostly somewhere around deep sea coral. They're called squat lobsters because they look similar to true lobsters, but are flattened in shape from the top and bottom. They don't go around carrying their shell with them, but their carapace is flexible and soft enough so they can squeeze their body into small crevices. When they do this, they leave their long, sharp claws exposed so they can keep unwanted visitors away. It's hard and dangerous to directly go into dark ocean depths and study underwater volcanoes. So researchers came up with a new way to do it. They study deep sea coral. As they develop, the skeletons of black corals contain a record of the noble gases in seawater. 
This helps scientists collect information on volcanic activity near these corals. Check out these unusual yellowish creatures known as snake stars. Researchers saw them on an undersea peak at a depth of 4,000 feet. They spend most of their time wrapped around coral branches. That's where they can easily capture food particles from the perches around them. Volcanic vents themselves hide some very pretty unusual creatures, such as these small hairy red-eyed crabs too. They live among rocks on the summit of seamounts in dark depths of up to 3,000 feet. There are crabs that leave even deeper than that, 1.5 miles on the ocean floor near Antarctica. They got their nickname Hoth Crabs because of their hairy chest and are part of a lost world of deep sea creatures that live around volcanic vents at great depths. Big male Hoth Crabs spend most of their time highest on the mineral spires of the vents. That's actually the closest to the hot fluids that go out of them, where smaller male crabs live at the base of the mineral spires. After they get together, females crawl away, looking for the warm fluids that seep from the sea floor. They are rich in minerals, but they can be toxic if they're young, so they need to get far away. This way, female crabs move to a safe place and hide from the potential predators, like seven-armed sea stars and big sea anemones. Wow, the cavalcade just never ends, huh? Now these next creatures, the Galapagos snakes, don't live in undersea volcanoes, but it's still fascinating how they've managed to adjust to living on the summits of volcanoes. The Galapagos Islands have 21 volcanoes, and 13 of them are active. It's a unique area with many animal species that you won't find anywhere else on the planet. A wide variety of iguanas, tortoises, lizards, geckos, seals, birds, and sea lions, and snakes that decided to inhabit volcanoes. Also, Alaskan fur seals have been popping up in some unusual locations, like the top of a small island that forms the tip of an active undersea volcano, perhaps? Vents there spew steam, mud, and sulfurous gases. Their surface is covered with huge rocks that exploded out of the vent a couple years ago. This place doesn't look that hospitable, but northern fur seals obviously wouldn't agree. Maybe because there's so much food around this island, like squid and northern smooth tongue, a deep water fish. Because of the ease with which they can gather food, it's much easier for them to take care of their young. And check out this giant woolly rat. It lives in the rainforest that surround the extinct volcano called Mount Basavi. Its crater is 2.5 miles wide. There are high walls around the volcano. And at first glance, it seems like nothing interesting has been going on here, except for some unusual creatures, like this large fluffy animal that kind of looks more like a beaver than a regular rat. It's 32 inches long from nose to tail and weighs 3.5 pounds. And it's one of the largest rats in the world. They have a silver gray coat and researchers think that they build their nests underground. These rats eat roots and leaves. This extinct volcano is in New Guinea, which is known for its over 70 species of mice and rats. So these woolly rats have obviously adjusted through generations and evolved to live in these unpleasant conditions. The Heikegani crab lives off the coast of Japan and has a distinct pattern on its shell that looks like a human face. More specifically, the face of an angry samurai, hence the nickname, the Samurai Crab. The scarlet-striped cleaning shrimp is a natural hitchhiker. It stands on the sea floor and waves its long antennae for fish and sea animals to go down and pick it up. Then it pays for the ride by cleaning the host from bacteria and plankton. Sea salps are often confused with jellyfish, although they're closer to Portuguese man-o-war. They're very quick to mature, growing from newborns to adults in less than 48 hours. The Galapagos Islands are legendary. They've got giant tortoises, blue-footed boobies, Sally Lightfoot crabs, and red-lipped batfish. But if you've ever swum around there, you might have seen something really unexpected in the water. Iguanas everywhere. These large marine reptiles eat the algae that grow on underwater rocks. They're strict vegetarians. I bet the fish are happy about that. A long flat tail designed for swimming helps them move around, and sharp claws keep them on the rocks for their daily sunbathing sessions. But watch them closely, they sneeze a lot. They haven't got a cold or anything, they're sneezing out salt. A special gland keeps the salt out of their nose, 
and they've got to get rid of it somehow. Sounds painful. What's cool is that they don't mind us in the water with them. Because the islands have been so isolated, the creatures here aren't afraid of humans. Fish can fly too. Thanks to their wing-like fins, flying fish can soar a distance of about 600 feet, almost as long as two football fields. They need flight to escape from predators. The skeleton shrimp could be the stuff of nightmares if it wasn't so tiny. As it is, it looks like a stick insect, but almost completely transparent. This creature looks more like a fish from a horror movie than from Earth's oceans. The sea devil anglerfish resides at a whopping depth of 3,200 feet and has no shortage of weird features. Razor-sharp teeth, a misshapen body, and an unsettling stare. But perhaps the creepiest thing about the sea devil anglerfish is the way it catches its prey. It has a fishing rod type appendage on its forehead that has a glowing light attached to the end to attract animals. Once these animals come close enough to the light, bam, they're captured by the sea devil's massive jaws. These guys are even capable of eating prey larger than they are, so their eyes aren't bigger than their stomachs. Starfish can cover their prey with their stomachs and eat it outside its body. Then, they simply bring their stomachs back inside. Well, that's handy. Their relatives, sea cucumbers, can do the same party trick, except that they leave part of their guts behind to scare their attacker. It's okay, the missing parts quickly grow back. Cockatoo squids, or glass squids, are a large genus whose members can reach quite impressive size. Yet one thing they have in common is that their bodies are transparent and the internal organs glow in the dark. Despite the hairy octopus looking like it's forgotten to comb its hair in the morning, it's actually its skin that's sticking in every direction. Other sea creatures have a harder time realizing where the octopus itself is this way, I guess. The hairy squat lobster lives in reefs, hiding from its enemies in crevices. If you're lucky to see it, you'll instantly notice the drastic difference between its whitish hairs and vibrant pink and violet claws. If you step on a sea urchin, you're gonna know right away. Look at those spikes. While they're not aggressive, they've got a great defense going against any creature that wants to eat them. Venomous spikes and a poisonous bite. <laughs> Pick your poison, literally. They live in all the oceans of the world, so avoiding them is out of the question. They mostly hang out in shallow water, hiding in rock pools and reefs. So unmindful people step on them a lot. The long venomous spikes of the urchin look like needles. They feel like them too. They can go in quite deep. Plus, they release a strong toxin. So what's the cure? Remove the spikes quickly and wash with salt water. Sea turtles are constantly crying. They're not sad or anything. The weeping is only because they excrete excess salts from their body through their tears. Box jellyfish tentacles grow up to 10 feet long, and each tentacle has 5,000 stinging cells. Not bad for a creature that's mostly just water. Their venom is strong enough to paralyze anything they want to eat. Now, if you happen to get stung, it's going to hurt a lot. Its toxins contain proteins that affect the heart, skin cells, and even our nervous system. No wonder it's considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. I wouldn't recommend using sunscreen, soda, coffee, or other older methods. They don't work. Your best bet is some good old-fashioned seawater. Looks like jellyfish are the rulers of the ocean, not sharks. The margin sea lizard isn't an actual lizard. It's a kind of sea slug that dwells close to the water surface. It swims upside down and somersaults to get food. And let's admit, it looks very cute. When some foreign object gets into an oyster's shell, be it a grain of sand, a parasite, or garbage, the thing irritates the mollusk's inner walls. Since the animal can't spit the item out, it envelops it in thin layers that separate from the body. These pearlescent layers accumulate until they form a round pearl. In the past, 
people believed that pearls were the tears of mermaids. Now we know they're just some decorated debris. Dolphins have highly developed communication. They call each other by name. Each dolphin responds to a specific sound. Mostly they say, stop calling me Flipper. The orca is the largest of dolphin species, and they actually have different cultures. Two orcas from different social groups won't even understand each other's language. They're the only animal known to do this. I wonder if they developed any Google Translate for dolphins. The banded shrimp, or banded boxing shrimp, was really aptly named. It's got bands of color all over its body and always stands in a boxer-like, ready-to-strike pose. The brown-lined paper bubble is another sea slug, and it definitely looks like one. It's got a special ability, though. It can quickly burrow holes in the sea floor, hiding from enemies inside them. The snakefish, as the name implies, looks a lot like a snake, but it has a very distinctive feature. It can walk on its fins. Thanks to this peculiarity, it easily crawls from one waterbed to another, choosing habitats more to its liking. On the way, a snakefish can get hungry, for sure, so it often munches on small birds and rodents. It can grow quite big, though, and hunt even larger animals. How much weirder can it get than to walk through the woods and suddenly see a huge and toothy fish stalking some rabbit? The alligator snapping turtle catches its prey by going fishing. Its tongue looks like a worm, and the turtle waits with its mouth wide open at the bottom of a stream, lake, or pond until some unsuspecting fish takes the bait. Then, snap! The jaws come together faster than the blink of an eye, and dinner is served. The mossy jellyfish is normally invisible in the dark abyss where it dwells, but when exposed to light, it will reflect it and shine beautifully. The black swallower might be small, but make no mistake, it could easily gulp down your favorite puppy. It can open its mouth extremely wide, allowing it to swallow prey twice its size. The African tigerfish will eat whatever it finds, and given its own size and that of its monstrous teeth, you can imagine it finds a lot of food. It mostly feeds on other fish, but when nutrition is scarce, it can jump out of the water and catch both insects and small birds right in the middle of the flight. It's not so big as to eat a human, of course, but the name should warn you that it can easily take a bite out of your arm or leg. Your brain controls your arms and legs, but with an octopus, each arm is actually kind of independent with its own special brain held together by a bigger central brain kind of like the conductor of an orchestra. The central brain sends higher level signals to each arm, saying things like, move to the left, there's a crab behind the corner, or touch this silly human's foot, let's mess with him a little bit. <laughs> no matter how smart their arms and legs might be, an octopus still needs to look after them all the time.